hello, hello, hello. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, Periscope. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God. Where's the volume button? Everything is not where it's supposed to be today, guys. Hold on just one second. I don't want it to go all the way down. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Um, as you notice, I'm not in our normal spot where I normally read. I have had some major water damage to my home. So I am having to go into my back room where I don't normally um, do the broadcast. And Periscope is looking so dark. Okay. Well, I hope it's not too dark for you, Periscope. All right, so this is what happens when you're not in your normal place and you don't have the right lighting. But that's not going to stop me from doing what I have to do. For it is a joy for me to come on with each of you as we read the Word of God together. I tell you, I have been looking forward to the book of Hebrews. You're going to absolutely love the book of Hebrews. Let me tell you something. The more of the word we read together, the more that you're beginning to realize, if you have not already, that reading the word of God is more than just sitting down reading some story. But you're getting history. You're getting the whys and the hows and the wheres and the reasons why God allowed the different books of the Bible to be penned. There's not enough volume of books that can be written that can tell us everything that God wants us to know about him through his word. You learn more about him as you spend time in his presence, as you begin to walk obediently with his will for your life. He begins to unfold himself to you. All right. So. I'm going to do our overview. I'm getting set up uh, for the book of Hebrews. I know uh, I don't seem like I'm, I'm, I got my stuff together, but I have it together. I'm ready for y'all today. I am ready. Hold on. And I think we're going to read it in the amplified version. I kept going back and forth and I didn't know which version I wanted to read it in. I don't think I'm going to do the Amplified. I think I'm going to do the message. But look, let me tell you, the overview is going to bless your soul. The overview <laughs> is probably about one. It's like three and a half pages. The overview of Hebrews is three and a half pages. So you all know whenever we start a new book, I always give you an overview um, before we start reading because you need to know when it was written and what God wants us to understand why it was written. All right. So we're back into the new Testament. Hebrews is, um, not all the way in the very back. It's, um, not too far from the book of revelation. So if you get to James, you just went a little bit too far. If you get to first Peter or first John, you definitely went too far. Just go back a couple more chapters and you'll see the book of Hebrews. It's in the New Testament. All right. So we're going to be reading Hebrews uh, 1 through 4 on today. We're going to use the Message Bible. Now, let's hear some things that we need to understand about Hebrews. Well, first we're going to pray and then we're going to hear some things that we need to understand about Hebrews before we begin to read it. All right. Father, we come before you with such joy in our hearts as we read your word and as we allow it to be written on the tables of our heart. Oh God, we thank you that you're writing your character on our hearts. Hallelujah. You're writing your love on our hearts. You're writing your commands on our hearts. You're writing your grace and your mercy on our hearts. You're writing your love. Oh, I could just go on and on and on about what you're doing as we read your word. We are so grateful for this opportunity. Oh, Father, we thank you for Jesus 
and the blood that he shed. And that through the book of Hebrews, we are going to see, we are going to finalize it in our minds that it is Jesus who saves us. It is Jesus who has redeemed us. It is Jesus who makes us righteous. It is Jesus who opens up the door so that we can come before your throne boldly, declaring your word, boldly coming before you and laying our petitions before you. We have access to you, Lord God, because of Jesus. It's not because of a man. It's not because of a woman, but it was because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. And we thank you for that. So when you see us, you don't see our sin. You see the righteousness of Christ. You see the love of Christ. You see the obedience of Christ. My God, hallelujah, we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord God. Let that marinate in our soul. Let our soul and our heart become one. Hallelujah. May we be a mirror of you, Lord God. Hallelujah. May we be so saturated in your presence that when people speak to us, when people see us, they see your glory. As Moses' face shone because he spent time with you, Lord God, make our countenance shine. Hallelujah. May our life be a fruit, a living epistle, a fruit of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Glory to your name. Glory. Hallelujah. Every person that comes on, Lord God, may you draw them with your everlasting love. Hallelujah. Let them see the patience that you have with each of us. Glory to your name. And then Holy Spirit, we come because we know that we need you. We know, Lord God, hallelujah, that without you, Holy Spirit, you are the revealer of the mysteries of God. It is you who reveals the mysteries. It is you who unravels and untangles the things that we don't understand. You just lay it all out and truth is revealed. And we thank you for that. We thank you for where the enemy of our soul had a grip on our minds and we could not understand your word. That grip is being released in the name of Jesus. Our eyes were blinded because we did not want to walk with you. Not that you didn't present yourself to us, but we didn't want to walk with you. We didn't want to line up with your word. Now your love is drawing us, drawing us close to you. Hallelujah. And where our ears couldn't hear the truth of the word, where all we heard was a distorted lie and we believed the lie over the truth, we thank you for dismantling the lies. We thank you that the lies have no legs to stand on. It has no foundation. Glory. And it's being revealed that it was a lie. And now we're walking in the truth and we can hear your word like we could never hear it before. We thank you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah for what you're doing in our lives, Father, and how you're maturing us as we read your word. In the holy, righteous, hallelujah, glorious, matchless name of Jesus. Who else's name? can save? Who else's name can forgive? Who else's name can cover sins? No one. Who else's name was the atonement? There is only one, and that is Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, your son, our elder brother, the, the, the atonement of all of our sin. We thank you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name in the name of Jesus the name that saves, the name that heals, the name that delivers, the name that conquered death, hell, and sin, and the grave. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. So now let's read the overview of Hebrews. All right. Glory to your name, Jesus. The writer of Hebrews is not known. However, the importance of the message is not lost. It doesn't matter who wrote it. 
It's if we receive the message that God wanted us to receive from the book of Hebrews. It was written to the Jesus believing Jews. So we are Jesus believing people. This book was written to us also. It's, it was written to the Jesus believing Jews who were in danger of falling away from the faith. That happens so many times now in our lifetime. We started out with friends. We started out with people in the church. And now they have fallen away from the church. They have fallen away from the faith. They have fallen away from the truth. It was also written to you and I. Notice in the book, in this book, the writer makes it plain that the new covenant that God has made through Christ is final and real. There's nothing else that's going to happen. The sin has already been atoned for. God has already uh, 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 allowed Jesus Christ to be the sacrificial lamb. There's not going to be another Christ that's going to come. The Messiah has already come. And he has atoned for the sin. Hallelujah. The first covenant was temporary. Hebrews explains there is no more a need for a priest to intercede on your behalf for uh, on your behalf to God. You don't need a man or a woman to intercede for you to cover your sins. Jesus Christ did it. There's no man or woman that can do that for us. I know, I know, I know. For some, that is what you have known all your life. But listen, don't click off. Listen to the book of Hebrews. It is not telling you to leave what you know. It's telling you to mature in the things that God has left written in the book for you. You don't need anyone else to go to Christ. You can go yourself. You can go before the throne of God by yourself. You don't need someone else to escort you in. Hallelujah. The blood has escorted you in. The blood that was shed on the cross. It's Jesus. He is the one huh, who God said, yes, because of that, they can come in. All right? Nothing else. No one else. No one else can save you. No one else can heal you. No one else can deliver you. No one else can set you free. A man or a woman cannot do that. We are representatives of Christ. Christ uses us, but it is Christ. It is the healing hand of Christ through a man or a woman, the delivering hand of Christ through a man or a woman, the redeeming hand of Christ through a man or a woman that reaches out to you. But the finisher of that work is Christ. The beginner of that work is Christ, all right? That's what we have to go ahead and get settled in our minds, all right? Christ's death has provided you and I direct access to God. There's no go-between. This is what we're going to learn in the book of Hebrews. You will notice four teachings that are going to challenge you. <laughs> the first one, salvation that Jesus offers us is greater than the salvation of the angels announced in the law of Moses. What? Yeah. You're going to learn Jesus is our apostle who was sent by God on a specific mission. He brings us into greater rest and promise than Moses and Joshua as they brought Israel out of Egypt. Number three, Jesus is a more effective high priest than the high priest, I'm sorry, he's a more effective high priest than the priests who were appointed by Moses. 
the Levites, all right? And the fourth thing we're going to see in the book of Hebrews, just as those who have had, uh, who had to live by faith before us, we, you and I, must live by faith in, in the unseen realities of heaven. It is a faith walk, all right? Through Jesus the Messiah, we are continually, not just one time, but continually receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God is continually solidifying that in us. His kingdom can't be shaken. This world can be shaken. Your beliefs can be shaken, but the kingdom of God, it cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross for our sins continually takes the sins away. The writer of Hebrews urges them to grow and not remain babies in Christ. You cannot consider yourself a baby and you've been walking with God for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years. Look, I'm going to give you the first five years and I'm going to say you can still be a babe in Christ. And, and I'm pushing it with that. After that, you need to grow and mature in the things of God. Your belief, if you still believe in the way you, believe, you were believing when you first uh, got saved, there's something wrong. You have a stunted growth. You are to continually grow. God will continually to reveal himself. He'll continually pour himself out into you if you let him. You can stay there. Look, what happens to a stagnant bed of water? Think about it. It grows um, uh, that film on top of it. Bugs get all in it. Uh, um, it can have mold in it. It becomes stagnant. And if it's too hot, mosquitoes grow in it. All kinds of viruses grow in it. It becomes polluted. Nothing in God is stagnant. God is forever progressing, forever moving. Look at the trees. Look at earth. Look at life on earth. Nothing stays the same. The trees uh, die in the winter, or they, they uh, I shouldn't say they die in the winter, but they regress in the winter. They're not putting forth any leaves. They're not putting forth any fruit. They're not putting forth any flowers. And all for all practical purposes, the trees look dead. But when spring comes around, the tree becomes uh, to, to, to life again, and it begins to spring forth new growth, new leaves, new flowers, fresh fruit. That's how we should be, continually progressing. If you're still in the same spot, you are stagnated. And no one can drink from stagnated water because there's not movement, all kinds of various uh, uh, viruses and bacteria have plenty of time to grow. The water is polluted, all right? All right. We are to mature in the things of God and the ways of God. It is time to mature. You are no longer going to be comfortable just going to church, just attending services. It is time to mature in God. All right? So Hebrews is not going to talk to you all cutie tootsie. Hebrews is going to challenge you. All right? Okay, here we go. Hebrews chapter 1 from the Message Bible. Going through... A long line of prophets, God has been addressing our ancestors in different ways for centuries. Recently, he spoke to us directly through his son. By his son, God created the world in the beginning. And it was all, and it all belonged 
to the sun at the end. The sun perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature. God, may we mirror you and be stamped with your nature. He holds everything together by what he says, powerful words. The son is higher than angels. After he finished the sacrifice for his sins, the son took his honored place high in the heavens, right alongside God, far higher than any angel in rank and rule. Did God ever say to an angel, you're my son, today I celebrate you, or I'm his father, he's my son. When he presents his honored son to the world, he says, all angels must worship him. Regarding angels, he says, the messengers are winds, the servants are tongues of fire. But he says to the son, you're God and on the throne for good. You make rules, I'm sorry, uh, on the throne for good. Your rule makes everything right. You love it when things are right. You hate it when things are wrong. That is why God, your God, poured fragrant oil on your head, marking you out as king far above your dear champions. And again to the son, you, master, started it all, laid earth's foundation. That is way too loud. Okay. Laid earth's foundations then crafted the stars in the sky. Earth and sky will wear out, but not you. They become threadbare like an old coat. You'll fold them up like a worn out cloak and lay them away on the shelf, but you'll stay the same year after year. You'll never fade, you'll never wear out. And did he ever say anything like this to an angel? Sit alongside me here on my throne until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Isn't it obvious that all angels are sent to help out those? I'm sorry. Isn't it obvious that all angels are sent to help out with those lined up to receive salvation. Chapter two. It's crucial that we keep a firm grip on what we've heard so that we don't drift off. God help us to keep a firm grip on your word so that we don't drift off. If the old message delivered by the angels was valid and nobody got away with anything, do you think we can risk neglecting the latest message? This magnificent salvation? First of all, it was delivered in person by the master, then accurately passed on to us by those who heard it from him. God, we thank you for that. The message of salvation was not sent by somebody else. Jesus himself came to deliver the message of salvation. All the while, God was validating it with gifts through Holy Spirit, all sorts of signs and miracles as he saw fit. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5, the salvation pioneer. God didn't put angels in charge of his business of salvation that we're dealing with here. It says in scripture, what is man and woman that you bother with them? Why take a second look their way? You made them not quite as high as angels, bright with Eden's dawn light. Then you put them in charge of your entire handcrafted world. 
when God put them in charge of everything, nothing was excluded. But we don't see it yet. Don't see everything under human jurisdiction. What we do see is Jesus. Jesus. What we do see is Jesus made, not quite as high as angels. And then, through the experience of death, crowned so much higher than any angel with a glory bright with Eden's dawn life. In that death, by God's grace, he fully experienced death in every person's place. God is solidifying it. Jesus died for your sins and for my sins and for our children and for our children's children and for generations to come and generations that passed. He died for all of our sins. He fully experienced death in every person's place. It makes good sense that the God who got everything started and keeps everything going now completes the work by making the salvation pioneer perfect through suffering as he leads all these people to glory. My God. Since the one who saves and those who are saved have a common origin, Jesus doesn't hesitate to treat them as family, saying, I tell my good friends, my brothers and sisters, all I know about you. I'll join them in worship and praise to you. Again, he puts himself in the same family circle when he says, even I live by placing my trust in God. If Jesus has to place his trust in God when he was here on the earth, what about us? Our trust is to be in God, not in man, not in woman, not in things, not in places, but in God. And yet again, I'm here with the children God gave me. Verse 14, since the children are made of flesh and the blood, it's logical that the Savior took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his death. By embracing death, taking it in unto himself, he destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. It's obvious, of course, that he didn't go through, didn't go to all this trouble for angels. He didn't do this for angels. He did it for the human race. It was for people like us, children of Abraham. That's why he had to enter. Listen, 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 listen. That's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. God, we thank you that there's absolutely nothing that we will experience that Christ did not come in the earth and experience it also. Then when he came before God as high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself. Do you hear that? Brother and sister, it does not matter what you are experiencing. I may not have experienced it. I may not be acquainted with it. But Christ is. He says he would have already experienced it all himself, all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help is needed. Whatever you are having to experience, just know that you do not have to experience it on your own. 
That is the beauty of what Christ did for us. He is acquainted with our grief. He's acquainted with our sorrow. He's acquainted with our disappointments. He is even acquainted with our joy. He's acquainted with our happy times. He's acquainted with our blessings. He is acquainted with every human emotion. Hallelujah. He is not a God that cannot feel, that has not experienced. That's why he says, come to me, lay everything at my feet, and I will give you my yoke. I'll take on the burden. I'll take on the burden of your life. And then I'm going to give you my yoke, and my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3 from the Message Bible. Hello, hello, hello to all those who are just tuning in. Thank you so much, all those who are watching the replay. We are reading the book of Hebrews. Go back, make sure that you hear the introduction. It will help you understand the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter three from the Message Bible. The centerpiece of all we believe. Now, this is why it is important that you read your word. If you don't know who the centerpiece, if you don't know who the focal point is, you will miss it. All right? You ready? So, my dear Christian friends, companions in following this call to the heights, take a good, hard look at Jesus. He's the centerpiece of everything we believe. Faithful in everything God gave him to do. Moses was also faithful, but Jesus gets far more honor. A builder is more valuable than a building any day. Every house has a builder, but the builder behind them all is God. The builder behind your business is God. The builder behind your education is God. The builder behind your family is God. The builder behind your job is God. The builder behind everything that you and I do is God. Moses did a good job in God's house, but it was all servant work, getting things ready for what was to come. Christ as son is in charge of the house. Christ is in charge of your ministry. Christ is in charge of your house. Christ is in charge of you man. Christ is in charge of you woman. Christ is in charge. All right? When you get that, you'll relinquish this feeling that you have to be in charge all the time. It has to be my way or the highway. No, God says it's my way or the highway. You're going to line up with my word. All right? <laughs> verse 6, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. Now, if we can only keep a firm grip on this bold confidence, we're the house. What? Christ is in charge of the house. We're the house. Wow. Yeah. That means Christ is in charge of you. That's why I said that. <laughs> That's why the Holy Spirit says today, please listen. Don't turn a deaf ear as in the bitter uprising that the time of wilderness testing. Don't turn a deaf ear when things in your life don't go the way you thought they should go. Don't turn a deaf ear to the word of God. Hey, don't click off. Ha, ha, don't you click off. You stay on here and you hear what Hebrews wants to bless you with. All right? <laughs> Even though they watched me at work for 40 years, your ancestors refused to let me do it my way. What is that? Pride and just rebellion. 
over and over. They tried my patience. My God. And I was provoked. Oh, so provoked. I said, they'll never keep their minds on God. They refuse to walk down my road. Exasperated, I vowed they'll never get where they're going. Never be able to sit down and rest. You keep wanting to do it your way. You keep wanting to say, well, this is the road that I'm going to take, and this is the path that I'm going to walk, and this is the way it's going to be. You'll never get to where you're going. You'll never enter into that beautiful place of rest here on the earth. You can have a peaceful, restful, enjoyable life right here on earth. Chaos can be breaking out all around you, but God will give you peace. All right? Verse 12. So watch your step, friends. Make sure there's no unbelief lying around that will trip you up and throw you off course, diverting you from the living God. That's what that's all about. When you don't want to do it the way God has asked you to do it, it's the enemy of your soul throwing in darts of diversion, trying to get you off track, trying to get you off target, trying to help you miss the mark. Ha! Huh. Now you see why the enemy of your soul is after you and wanting you to think that you are, uh, what is it they call the head person in charge? You are not the head person in charge. I'm not the head person in charge of this. I take leader, oh, uh, leadership from Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit doesn't give me peace to go on, I don't go on until he does. If I have something written out and it, it seems like that's what I'm supposed to say, then when I get on, things shift, I follow Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter what I want to do. This is God's word. The word is being read so that you will know what Holy Spirit is revealing to the church today, to your children, to your children's children. This word is true, is just as it true as it was for the children of Israel, as it is for us today. All right? For as long as as it is still God's today, keep each other on your toes so sin doesn't slow down your reflexes. If we can only keep our grip on the sure thing we started out with, where, I'm sorry, we're in this with Christ for the long haul. You and I are in this for the long haul. You just didn't receive salvation just for a temporary fix. This is a lifestyle. It transforms your life. Once you were walking, you were walking through this life, but you were dead to the things of God. And then you received salvation and you came alive. Don't go back to the old things. Don't go back to your old ways. If it wasn't life then, it's not life now, all right? These words keep ringing in our ears. Today, please listen. Don't turn a deaf ear as in the bitter uprising. Verse 15. For who were the people who turned a deaf ear? Weren't they the very ones Moses led out of Egypt. What? And who was God provoked with for 40 years? Wasn't it those who turned a deaf ear and ended up corpses in the wilderness? And when he swore that they'd never get where they were going, wasn't it he? <laughs> wasn't he talking to the ones who turned a deaf ear? They never got there because they never listened, never believed. 
Don't be so hard hearted that you don't want to hear the word of God or the instructions of God, because in doing so, you will never get to where you are supposed to be going. Oh, you might be successful. You might be a household name. But if you're a household name on earth and not a household name with God, you have nothing. You have accomplished nothing. You've got the accolades of men. But when it comes time and you need healing, those men won't be found. Those women won't be found. Those friends will leave you. When your money runs out and your change is strange, all those people that were hovering around you won't call you, won't even receive your messages anymore. <laughs> Come on here now. You know it's the truth. You know that's the truth. So why go through all this whole life and come to realize that it meant nothing. It was wood, hay, and stubble. And it's going to be burned up in the fire. You want your life to be filled with gold and silver that cannot be burned in the fire. My God, what? Come on, let's read our last chapter, Hebrews 4. See, it's time for us to mature in the things of God. Stop doing things your way. Ask God, Lord God, this is my business. Where is it not lining up with what you have ordained? And, and is this the business you wanted me to start? <laughs> is this the way I'm supposed to be going? Because if it's not, I would rather do what you want me to do than to do what I want to do. All right? When the promises are mixed with faith, I'm, I'm in chapter four, verse one. Uh, when the promises are mixed with faith, for as long then as that promise of resting in him pulls us onto God's goal for us, we need to be careful that we're not disqualified. What? You mean to tell me you can be walking with the Lord all of your life and still be disqualified. Say what? Come on. See, this walk is not some little cakewalk thing where you walk with him on Sunday for only two or three hours. And then the rest of your God-given week, you do whatever it is you feel like doing. You are disqualifying yourself. Come on. Let's listen. For as long then as that promise of resting in him pulls us on to God's goal for us, we need to be careful that we're not disqualified. We receive the same promises. Listen, listen. We receive the same promises as those people in the wilderness. But the promises didn't do them a bit of good because they didn't receive the promises with faith. Lord, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I speak it, name it, declaim it, declare it, decree it. But you don't really have the faith for it. Hey, everything about God is by faith. Faith mixed with love, all right? Come on, come on. If we believe, though we'll experience the state of resting, but not if we don't have faith. Remember that God said, exasperated, I vow they'll never get where they're going, never be able to sit down and rest. God made that vow even though he finished his part, listen, before the foundation of the world, it was already settled. <laughs> Somewhere it is written, God rested the seventh day, having completed his work. But in this other text, he says, they'll never be able to sit down and rest. 
So this promise has not yet been fulfilled. Those earlier ones never did get to the place of rest because they were disobedient. Yeah. You know how you want your children to be obedient, but you just can't seem to be obedient to the things of God and you expect God to give you rest. Wow. Okay. God keeps renewing the promise and setting the date as today. Just as he did in David's Psalms centuries later than the original invitation. Today, please listen. Don't turn a deaf ear. Verse 8. And so, this is still a live promise. It wasn't canceled at the time of Joshua. Otherwise, God wouldn't keep renewing the appointment for today. The promise of arrival and rest is still there for God's people. God himself is at rest. Why don't you join in that rest that God has promised? Walk in it in faith, believing the word of God, believing the promises of God, walking it out in your life. And at the end of the journey, we'll surely rest with God. So let's keep at it and eventually arrive at the place of rest, not drop out through some sort of disobedience. God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, lying, I'm sorry, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one is impervious to God's word. We can't get away from it no matter what. You can run to the mountains. You can run and build yourself a, a, a house underneath the, the sea in a, in a submarine type of house. You can get like uh, Elon Musk, try to go to the moon and live on the moon without God. You can have all the money in the world and not have a television so that you don't have to hear a single preacher ever again in your life. <laughs> You can go wherever to the farthermost part of this world and the word of God will still reach you. And it's up to you to receive his word and to receive his promises. All right. The high priest who cried out in pain, Hebrews 4 and 14. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. With ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. I don't think you understand how powerful these words are for your life. You have access to God. You don't have to wait until your appointment at 4 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon uh, after the third priest has come to the place of confession. You don't have to wait to your appointment with some man or a woman in, in any place. You can go to God and access the throne of God right now while we're talking you can block out my words and go and speak to god yourself god it's me that's standing in a need to have your more of you it's me 
standing in the place asking you to pour out of your spirit into me that wants to know more about you. It's me that is asking Holy Spirit to reveal himself to me, to reveal God, to reveal Jesus, to reveal the truth of your word. Hallelujah. You have that right. Even if you just want to go to God and say, God, I love you. God, I don't want to ask you for anything because you have given me so much. You have done so much. What more could you do for me? I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for this opportunity to come before your face, to come before your throne, to worship your name, to give you glory, to walk in obedience with you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. You have that right. You have that free access. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait on anybody. You don't have to wait on any special day. You can talk to God while you're working. You can talk to God while you're driving. You can talk to God while you're doing your housework. You can talk to God while you're just riding through the city. Lord, I love you. God, what is your what is your plan about this? God, how do you what do you want me to do about this situation? God, how do you want me to respond to this uh 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 situation that I'm going through? God, God's ear is open. His ear is not closed. <laughs> you don't have to pay him money to come to to his ear. You don't have to pay money to come before the throne. You don't have to pay money to get an answer from God. You just have to go to him, hallelujah, and begin to speak to him. You don't have to use thee, thou, and thou. You can say, God, I tell you what, this was a heck of a day. I didn't like this and I didn't like that, but I thank you for giving me the opportunity to see this day. Thank you that you're showing me how to walk out these situations that I face on this job where nobody wants to hear about you, where it's very dark. But you put me there, God. You put me there for a reason. So let me shine. Let your glory shine through me so that men and women can see you. Come on, you don't need nobody else to go before the throne. My God, we thank you for that. We don't have a high priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. He has experienced everything you and I go through, but he never sinned. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Glory. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy. Accept the help. You want to know why you haven't gotten the answers? Because you won't talk to God. You'll talk to your friends. You'll talk to your your co-workers. You'll talk to everybody else but God. <laughs> you want to know what God has planned for your life? Begin to spend time with him. You want to know what God, how God feels about you? Begin to spend time with him. Talk to him before you talk to anybody that's on the same level as you whether they're parallel to you, whether it's a boss, whether it's a, a, a leader, an elder, whomever it is, talk to God first. Talk to God first. He wants to hear your voice. He loves your voice. He loves it. He wants you to come to him. Sometimes I don't even have anything to ask God for. All I want is just to sit in his presence. Do you know that peace comes over me at that time? Sometimes you don't have to go to God asking him for anything. Just go sit in his presence. And whatever you begin to hear in your spirit, just begin to write it down. Because that's God speaking to you. That's God confirming his love for you. Hallelujah. He loves you dearly. 
right? Well, we have finished reading our first four chapters of Hebrews. God help us to mature in the things of Christ. No longer will we continue to just suck on the bottle and want everybody else to pray for us, want everybody else to come in and help us. It is time that we begin to pray for ourselves. How many people have you asked, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Can you, how do you know they pray? You don't. But if you will pray for you, <laughs> you know God hears it. No, you may not pray like your pastor. No, you may not pray like the mother of the church. No, you may not pray like that deacon who can just, you know, whenever he starts praying, you just sense the presence in the room changes. But if you open up your mouth, you will see how powerful you are because you are full of the spirit of God. You are full of the love of Christ. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You can open your mouth up and speak to God freely. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this book of Hebrews that is releasing us from the bonds that says we can't go before the Father. You waiting for somebody to, to walk you through the plan of salvation? The plan of salvation was Jesus. <laughs> That's the plan. So uh, there's no special prayer. Father, I come before you and I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And then just let, just pour it all out. Just pour yourself out. Pour, you know what? Pour yourself out to God. The same way you pour yourself out on the phone, pour it out to God. Because he can actually answer you. He can actually give you a solution to your problems. He can actually cause that marriage to be healed. He can actually cause that wayward child to come back home. Yes, he can. He can actually cause that boss to begin to see you in a different light. They don't want to, but the power of God will cause them because favor begins to rest upon your life. All right? All right. Well, I love every last one of you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on and watching the book of Hebrews, chapters 1 through 4. Tomorrow we will be back on with Hebrews chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. All right? I may have to be in another room uh, the other day. Uh, water damage in there in my living room, dining room, and kitchen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So they're going to start work on my house. So I don't know which room I'm going to be in because it's going to be quite noisy. I may have to go out to the car. I may have to go to a library. I may just have to go downstairs. But we will continue reading the book of Hebrews, all right? So see, like I told y'all the other day, doesn't mean that trouble doesn't happen, doesn't mean that uh, things don't happen in your life, but do you know when that happened? When I saw so much water coming into my home, oh my God, there was just the peace that came over me. And the young man that's the, the contractor, he came over and he was so, he was full of so much humility. Not forced humility. I can see this man loves God. So I don't think that this is a mistake. Hallelujah. God was showing me. Terrible things can happen, but I will give you peace. You'll have peace through it all. All right? All right. All right. Well, we'll be back on tomorrow reading Hebrews 5 through 8. I love you all dearly. Don't forget to share. If this is your first time coming on, don't forget to hit the like button and the follow button. That way you will know every time that we come on. And you may not be able to watch it right then, but if you just click on those three little um uh, those three little dots, it'll say save the video. You can save it and watch it later. All right. We have already covered
43, 44 books of the Bible. There are only 66. In June, we would have completed reading the entire Bible. And you thought you couldn't do it. Look at God. All right. We're getting ready for some more stuff. So come on, come on, come on. God wants you to know that word. Know what he has to say to you. Know what the word. Look, you got to get this word written on your heart. All right. You got to know what, how God feels about you. You got to know what he says for yourself. Not because someone told you what the word said, but so that you will know yourself. All right? Okay. We're going to wrap it up. We're at an hour. I love you all. We'll be back on reading Hebrews 5 through 8. All right, guys? Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Periscope. Bye-bye, Facebook.